Coming up, a Chromebook you can touch, a sporty Galaxy S5, and a 4K laptop at an 8K price. It's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Nature Box. Order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine. Get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like honey Dijon pretzels. Oh, baby. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Boy, it's kind of laptop day today on uh, Before You Buy. I think every one of us is reviewing a different kind of notebook or laptop-style computer, starting off... Actually, no, you've got a phone. Yeah, I do. I All right, Chad's going to be the one... I also happen to own a laptop. Yeah, so, so. he's got a lap in his top. Mm -hmm. or I top. got a top... Uh, Never mind. Well, anyway, um, so this we've no, we've talked about. It. I've reviewed the Galaxy S5. It's been out for a while now, and as Samsung did with the Galaxy S4, they've released some variants on it. This is the sport model, of right? The this is the S5. sport edition of the phone. The things that you this is basically everything that you get in the Galaxy S5. What you're doing is you're sacrificing a little bit of thickness for ruggedness and a few other features uh, built in. The main feature is that this is waterproof, um, and or not waterproof, but water resistant f uh, for a little while. For you know, uh, yeah, you know, the, the term waterproof slash water resistant. There are technical definitions for this. What what level of water resistance does it have? This you... one is, uh, I believe, it's thirty feet for thirty minutes. Oh, well, that's uh, not bad. So I mean, yeah. nobody, so believe me, you don't want to go down thirty feet unless you've got uh... right. Exactly. I'm actually trying to find exactly what that was. Um, they give it a they give it a letter designation. Well, that's fine. Right. I don't want to um, you on that. The other thing that this has, just like the S5, is a heart rate monitor on the back, so you can place your finger over this sensor and it will test your heart rate. Other than that, the specs are a 16 gig uh, megapixel, 16 megapixel uh, shooter on the back, a two megapixel shooter on the front. This is 5.1 inch uh, display. This is a 1080 display, so that's uh, 430 uh, pixels per inch. Um, of course, Android, uh, it's 4.4.2. Uh, and with lots of TouchWiz, so if you start getting in here, you'll you'll notice TouchWiz kind of right off the bat, uh, in especially in apps and settings and things like that. All your settings have you know different drop downs and much a much different look than your normal Android. On top of that, they've added a lot of apps to sort of bring this phone to a more sporty feel when it comes to the apps that they bundle in. Uh, this is the Sprint version, so it has Sprint Fit Live over here on the home screen. Uh, you can uninstall that, and then it also has this little pull down over here, which has uh, you know Map My Fitness and S Health as well, and that's always on the home screen, unless if you get a different home, home screen. Uh, yeah, and S Health is part of all of the Galaxy Right. Phones. I'm not sure about Map My Fitness. You think that's Map. unique to this uh, Sport Edition? That's a. I'm. I. I haven't seen the uh, the original. Um, I'm but. trying to remember. I don't remember Map My Fitness. So maybe that's something just for that. Okay. And also has these people in the background that look like they're running. So ah, that's get oh, motivated. Well, there yeah, you go. Absolutely. I hope that you're <laughs> excited about your. Makes S5 me want to leap to my feet and yawn. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> right. And of course, it has like the magazine features. It has all these the, the Samsung TouchWiz features, um, and then lots of bloatware. This whole page, they oh. give you a whole page of bloatware. Yeah. Um, on top of that, they put the Sprint bloatware in its own little folder, so uh, you can use this to uninstall everything. Um, that is, by the way, ingress protection rating 67. Oh. Well, now you know. Uh, I looked it up. Sorry that what I was saying before wasn't quite clear <laughs> enough for you. Ingress level 67. That test for dust intrusion and water submersion, only a meter for 30 minutes. A meter for 30 minutes. The big difference. So I was thinking 30 
feet times for 30 minutes. centimeters <laughs> for 30 minutes. It's, oh, you know, you're Sorry. absolutely right. It's a thousand millimeters. It's a thousand millimeters. Seconds. You're absolutely you right. Think about that. <laughs> um, a thousand, folks. It does say it's not shockproof. So it's, but the, this is the rugged design. This is the sport. This is yeah. what you All get. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. well, that's crazy. Uh -huh. um, uh, looking around the, the hardware, you got the headphone jack on the top. You have a power button on the side, which is nicely placed for your thumb. Uh, at the bottom, you have, this is a micro USB uh, charger. Uh, on the bottom, hidden behind a, uh, a a door here. This is a little bit intrusive, but that's what you have to deal with. That's for the in order to get the water. Oh, I'm sorry, the ingress protection. Ingress. Yes. Ingress the protection. There you go. Yes. Uh, you have uh, a volume rocker on the back. The buttons on the front are are tactile. These are physical buttons, which I actually really uh, enjoyed. I really okay, like that's a big difference. buttons. Because the regular S5 only has one home button. Yeah. And then the rest are on screen. Yeah, so, so no that's capacitive buttons, which yeah. means that if it gets wet or something, you could still hit the home button without the screen screwing up because it's you know haptic uh, or uh, 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 capacitive. And so that I actually really like these physical buttons, which the definitely sets the uh, the that's sport different. Apart. Yeah. So that's if you want physical buttons, that's one of the few phones today that still has physical. Right. All physical. Right. Buttons. All physical yeah. real buttons. Yeah. Uh, the back sort of has the the <laughs> rubber. The this is if you want a different style of band aid back, you can get the S5. Uh, you know, wow. People are making fun of the uh, the note. The, this uh, they back. call this electric blue. And yeah, I find it shocking. There's a few different colors. So they'll have blue and red and those sets of colors. So if you really want some sort of metallic color uh, for your phone, this sport is uh, where, where it's at. It also does have a SIM card, uh, or it has not only a SIM card, but a... Um, SD card. Micro SD card And slot. removable back, which is great. And removable back. In uh, fact, a little surprising on a waterproof Right. Phone. Now, it will remind you every chance that uh, it gets that you need to make sure to plug this up. thing up with yeah. pop-ups that definitely feel like pop-up ads. Uh, every single time that you do something like remove the back or open this thing up to charge it. Oh, and you also have to make sure that you always, you have to put in the bottom first. Otherwise, there's, there's no hope. There's absolutely no hope if you don't do that. Um, so, uh, another, now, the battery life. I found the battery life on this phone was fantastic. It was really, <laughs> really good. I took some screenshots of over 24 hours of having wow. this uh, phone on. Um, I was really, really, really impressed with battery life. Camera performance was also pretty good. Uh, so here's a, a screenshot of the battery. Come on. Oh, there we go. Um, this was two days and an hour. Wow. Um, now, granted, I had just reset the phone. So I had used this phone for about a week and a half when uh, I, I customized everything. I, mm. I changed the home screen. I did everything. And then I reset the phone back to stock so that I could play around with the stock apps that it comes with. Um, and so this was the kind of a day of it kind of just sitting on standby on my desk. Uh, I used What's it the th screen on time? Because that's really the, the this, key on that. Uh, screen on time is down here. Does it say? Does is there? Uh, I don't see. It just it's a graph. Yeah, it's just a graph. So All down right. here is screen on time, um, and then yeah, I picked it, it back like up and used, used it bit. for yeah. the rest of the day. Yeah. So this is two days. Uh, if you're someone who doesn't pick up your phone and use it a lot, this I could easily see this stretching even further. Um, so I was really really impressed with battery life. Uh, when it comes to the camera, you're going to have a, sort of uh, the, the same camera that is on all of the Samsung uh, devices that feels a little bit difficult to get into because there's so many different modes, there's so many different features, there's beauty face. Every single time you, you put the, the phone into uh, selfie mode, into using the front-facing camera, it automatically turns on beauty face, which I think is face, funny. Huh? Mm. Now, oh, look, you want to take some flawless photos? Here's beauty, beauty face. face? Um, so, yeah, sure, I'll take some beauty face photos. Um, Beautiful. There we go. Nothing, Absolutely. Nothing that can do nothing, for me, but uh, that you look good. You face. look. Look at that. I look like I have the That's tiniest a, head. A duck face. <laughs> wow. That's not a beauty face. Um, uh, in general, I found that the, the camera was fine. It does have a flash, which is really nice. Um, there's some photos of my cats in my, in my sock drawer. Uh, some you know, Snapchat photos and then some kombucha photos. Anyway, uh, generally I found that the camera was really good. So, for the pros, 
Uh, it's waterproof uh, and it's uh, dust resistant as well. It's rugged, which I really liked, and the battery life was really, really good. As long as you don't use it. As long as it, well, I mean, I used it. Well, then I also use, you know, I you used, used it, it on a normal okay. basis, and and it lasted me throughout the day with you know 20% battery at the end of the day. So I was overall, I was very happy with. The now battery. this is a Sprint exclusive, I. Think. Thing. This is the yeah sprint version. Yeah. Um and uh so uh for the cons I'd have to give it uh the software was very very annoying. So unless if you yeah. plan like basically I wouldn't recommend this phone unless if you're going to uh tweak it in the software department or you love Samsung or you really mm -hmm. love a lot Samsung phones right. a ton. That was my complaint about the regular S5. It's just larded up with Samsung stuff. Oh god, stuff. it's horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. Um, uh, also on the cons, I, I did not like this design. I gotta say, it's flashy. It's kind of the absurd. plastic looks cheap. It looks to cheap. Be honest. Uh, I didn't. I I really was I, kind of embarrassed taking this phone out of my pocket. I want to do something colors. here. I've seen all the colors. Before you give us our your buy and uh -huh. don't buy. Do the heart rate monitor because I happen oh, to yes. have here a medical grade heart rate monitor. That Absolutely. One of our uh, fans and who's visiting from uh, New Mexico. Is Jim? Yes. Jim from New Mexico. So put my finger on it. Hit yeah. OK. It says. Because it's using, uh, it's using, it's got a light on the back and you put your finger on it and you have to measure it. It looks like you've got 89 bits per minute. Now let's try this medical grade heart okay. rate monitor. Um, that this also measures uh, blood oxygen, which. Right. The uh, Samsung does not. Everybody's asking, does it make phone calls? Did you were you able to it, make? Well, it does make phone. It does calls. make phone calls. Right. Was able to make phone calls. What's your heart rate there? Here it comes. So uh, the uh, beats per minute is eighty-eight. I think that's then, close enough for government work. So we might actually be able to do this like both at the same simultaneously. Time, I wonder. Um, it's within a beat. I think that's good enough. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I guess it's within a beat. At least <laughs> I'm. At least my. Yeah. We know it's not skipping a that's beat. So it's fairly accurate. That's that's also right. good. So, now we get the uh, the bottom line. Buy, try, don't buy, buy. Buy, try, don't buy. I would say on this phone, buy. Eh. <laughs> it's leaning towards try. Not an enthusiastic it's not buy. an enthusiastic buy. The thing is, I, I felt this was a very solid phone. It was fast, battery life was great, and it has some cool features. I, it's hard to recommend to someone who I know isn't going to tweak it because the when I use this phone, and I deleted the apps I didn't want, I changed the home screen, and I changed it, I this was my daily driver. The moment that I reset it back to factory and yeah. tried to live with it based off of Samsung Samsung's apps that they put onto the phone, I basically didn't want to pick it up and use it because there's pop-ups pop all the time and the extra features on the home screen I don't care about. I'd accidentally click them when I was aiming for another app. It just became a really frustrating experience. I, feel, I still feel like the hardware is a great phone so if you're gonna tweak it, buy. Did you go diving to, a thou to the depth <laughs> to, of a thousand millimeters? I did, I, we did dunk it in water, but and it survived. It survived. Well, that's good right. enough. Right. So uh, it's a buy. Please tweak it. Please delete yeah. all of Samsung yeah. stuff off of it. It's kind um, of our general right. attitude towards Samsung right. stuff. Is it's fine if they would just crap it up. If this was for your grandma, no. if the Google Play no. edition, they don't offer Google Play edition, but if they no. did, then it'd be a no-brainer. Right. Yeah. That's Chad Johnson. He's the host of OMG Craft and Read It Up. Who gave us this heart rate? I told you Jim did. Oh, Jim. Perfect. And Jim's Thanks, Jim. lying on the floor, so we better get it <laughs> back to him right now. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. Uh, and um, thank you for your review. Absolutely. Uh, we gave Pod... Now it's all laptops, notebooks, and that kind of thing. We gave Padre the latest from Toshiba, the Tecra W50, and he had this to say about it. The Tecra W50 A1501 is Toshiba's new for 2014 enterprise class desktop replacement targeted at IT departments, power users, and executives. To be clear, this is a desktop replacement. It has a battery, but it's not designed to run away from the power outlet. It's a notebook, but it weighs 6 pounds and is up to 1.37 inches thick. It has a power adapter that weighs more than my Ultrabook. It's built for power and power alone. The W50 is powered by a 4th generation Intel Haswell i7-4800MQ quad-core CPU with 6 megabytes of Intel Smart Cache, running at 2.70 GHz with a turbo frequency of 3.7 GHz. The CPU is supported by 16 GB of DDR3L system memory upgradable to 32 GB, 
and an NVIDIA Quadro K2100M GPU with 2GB of dedicated GDDR5. All that power drives the centerpiece of the W50, a 15.6-inch 16x9 LED backlit IGZO 4K Ultra HD display, capable of 3840x2160 and supporting 2160p content. The screen is beautiful. You could stare at it all day and not see a pixel. The colors are deep and rich with no discernible bleed through. In fact, the only issue I could find with the 4K screen was that it was a little dim compared with laptops with standard 1080p screens. Although specs sound fantastically impressive, the fastest mobile CPU you can shoehorn into a laptop, plenty of memory, powerful dedicated graphics, a monster screen that is beautiful, and with a street price of about $2,200, it's a decent purchase for power users. The question is, does the rest of the notebook measure up? First up, connectivity, and the W50 has it in spades. On the right side, you'll find a Kensington lock port, the comically large power port, gigabit ethernet, a media port, USB 3.0, and an express card slot. On the left side are audio, a smart card, an additional three USB 3.0 ports, with one of them doubling as an eSATA connector, VGA, and full-size HDMI. The front of the W50 houses a media card reader and the underside hides a docking port. Toshiba equipped the W50 with Bluetooth 4.0, a dual band 802.11a-b-g-n-ac Wi-Fi adapter, and a DVD Super Multi-Drive. The W50 has a full-size backlit keyboard with plenty of spacing, a dedicated numeric keypad, and a standard multi-touch trackpad with a row of status LEDs just below, as well as an eraser head pointing device. So that's all the good stuff, and a lot of good stuff it is, but now to the rest. Primary storage on the W50 is a 7200 RPM hard drive. Not an SSD, not a hybrid, not a rotating drive with an SSD cache module, but a straight up hard drive. I don't understand the thought process of an engineer who thought to combine a high power GPU and CPU, a load of memory and a 4K display with a storage device that is slower than slow. It makes no sense. And Toshiba included a makes no sensometer in the LED that shows hard drive activity. If you're doing anything that requires even moderate storage usage, your experience will vacillate between awesome and and awesome and and awesome and. Toshiba does include some decent software like an auto parking utility to prevent hard drive damage in a fall, but all those little pieces of bloatware conspire to keep the hard drive active all the time and that just kills performance. Nowhere is that more clear than in benchmarking. The W50 scored a 9967 in PC Mark Vantage. That's well below the 13 and 14,000 that we've seen from Dell and HP desktop replacements. Though the W50 has more CPU and graphics power, the hard disk drive bottlenecks all that power. Unfortunately, it's not just the hard drive. The construction itself is questionable. The unit looks dirty, but there is way too much flex in the body panels. You'd think that Toshiba would throw in some brushed aluminum, magnesium, or even Gorilla Glass to stiffen the chassis and lid. In all, the W50 is a machine that has a lot of potential, but is crippled by some questionable component choices. The Toshiba W50 A1501 is available now with a three-year warranty. You can find it online for about $2250. All right, there you go. That's the to that is a big. It is a big honking laptop. A honking laptop. And, and 4K screen, I think. <laughs> this is the power adapter. Oh, man. <laughs> this is a desktop replacement. This, this is, is a not desktop supposed to be portable. I, I've had it unplugged, and I think I'm already down to 70%. It's been unplugged for wow. like five minutes. Is it for gamers? No. Uh, that was the thing about the review. I'm not sure who it's from. I, th this this does have a lot of pros. The screen is beautiful. This 4K yeah, screen is, is gorgeous. The back is nice. The back is nice. It's got the a lot of ports. It's nice. It's super fast. Uh, the processor is super fast. It's you know it's a quad core i7. It yeah, but pushing all those pixels, gamers aren't. It's not going to be fast no, enough. It's not fast enough. And then this is the big con. The con is. It's got a hard drive, a standard hard yeah. drive. Not, not a hybrid, not a cache model, but a hard drive. And that just kills it. Yeah. And it makes me wonder what their engineers were thinking. I mean, you're, you save, what, $60 with that move? The, the laptop already cost $21.50. Saving $60 to knock 50% of the yeah. performance off your laptop, that's right. just silly.
Uh, hmm. Plus no DVD, no Blu-ray. Oh, no, it, it, it does, does have it a does, It does have that. Okay. So this is one of those desktop replacements that, that okay. understood that it should it have. It sounds like it's really a home media center kind of thing. It's a home media center, but at this price? Right. I, I don't, I mean... That's awfully expensive. It's crazy expensive yeah. for what it is. And it feels a little cheesy. It feels cheesy. This thing is super flexible. I know that people are going to break this. Yeah. The first time that you let it slip, it's right. just going to crack the screen in half. And that's the big, the big expense on this machine. All right. So uh, your, your final vi uh, uh, verdict? I, I'm afraid that uh, I have to give this one a don't buy. Yeah. I, I want to try it. I really do. But yeah. the hard drive is the deciding factor. Yeah. Uh, if, if I had an SSD in here, this would probably be a buy for that price for the 4K screen. But with a hard disk drive, I just I can't give it. You know, my sense is at this point that the PC manufacturers are stymied. They don't know what people want. They can't sell them no matter what they do. And so I think they're just trying a lot of different form factors. Um, they're thinking, obviously Toshiba's thinking, well, a 4K display, that should be enough to drive people to the market. Um, no. And I don't think even people want uh, desktop replacements anymore. I mean, yeah, what, I mean, what is that for? If, Who is that for? If I can get it this screen in wow, like an ultra book format, good. exactly. Well, I mean, yeah. you can't tell because we're broadcasting 720, right. but it does. I can tell. It is gorgeous. It's a yeah. beautiful, beautiful screen. Yeah. But if you don't have the stuff on the back end to make that, right. to drive this reliably, th then what are you doing? Father Robert Ballas here, hope, hope, the hope of This Week in Enterprise Tech, <laughs> tech the host <laughs> of This Week in Enterprise Tech. He's the uh, also uh, the uh, host of Padre's Corner. Tonight. We call it Paco. Okay, I like and, that. And uh, it's on uh, every uh, every Tuesday night, seven thirty p.m. After everybody goes home. After everyone goes home, um, I basically turn the lights on and I do love my that thing. show. It's awesome. Of course, know how and coding one hundred and one as well. Just for that, you deserve some dark cocoa nom noms. Oh, I'm kind of addicted to those things. They're really good, They're aren't really they? Really good. Mini cocoa oat cookies. All right, you can have some. All right. <laughs> I feel like I'm training him. <laughs> good boy. Have a have a nom nom. They're actually called nom noms. You're like a drug pusher. This is Nature Box, my friends. And if you don't know about Nature Box, you ought to know about it. Visit naturebox.com slash twit. Snacks delivered to your door. But And if that if that were all, if it were just that, I'd say go. Do it. Enjoy. But there's so there's more. It's healthy snacks delivered to your door. Nutrition is approved. They have hundreds of different varieties. It's kind of mind-boggling. Every time we get a new Nature Box... We've got new stuff we've never seen. Like, I hadn't seen those cocoa Num Nums yet. Uh, praline pumpkin seeds, whole wheat blueberry figgy bars, honey macadamia pretzel pops, Ooh, baked cheddar potato fries. Nutritionist approved never any high fructose corn syrup or trans fats, never any artificial flavors or colors, only good stuff, delicious. And if you've got dietary needs, you can get those served too. Vegan, you bet it. Just say, I want a vegan box. They also do gluten conscious, soy free. They, you can choose by variety of flavor as well, sweet, savory, spicy. You've got complete control over your nature box. My suggestion, though, is get that first box. We're going to give you half off and get the best variety you can. You never know what people are going to like. If you've got kids, they're going to love nature box, and you're going to be happy that they're eating such delicious food instead of that candy bar from the vending machine. We give them to our employees, too, and they just sit up and go, woof, naturebox.com slash twit for 50 percent off i can't decide i think i'll do the honey macadamia pretzel pops today it's always fun to go back in the uh, kitchen and see Ooh, what have i got all the bags resealable they're ziploc so you can uh, you know have one you know eat a healthy amount it's a great deal naturebox.com slash twit hey look who's here <gasps> I am no longer Father Robert Balasser. I am Jason Howell. He's stretched. <laughs> I ate Nature Box and it turned me into Look a completely different person. Look at what it's done for him. Huh? Uh, so we've got another uh, laptop, it well, looks like. Well, not yeah. really a laptop, although I'm, I'm, what not, is that? I'm not too surprised that someone might think so because it's the Lenovo Yoga It's a tablet. tablet. It's okay. a tablet. Yeah. So Can you put a keyboard on that? Um, I'm sure that you could connect. But it's really Bluetooth, more. It's, but it's, it's a tablet. Okay. As it is, it's a tablet with a stand that makes it look kind now, of like. Now, as the host of All About Android, of course, you're probably very interested in these. This is an Android device. Yes. Yes, it yeah. is Android. Uh, it's the Yoga Tablet 10 HD Plus. It's three hundred forty-nine dollars. Well, that's a good price. And uh, actually, Holy I haven't cow. seen where the camera. So is. a ten-inch tablet. Okay. Yeah. So it's a. T there we go. Thank you guys. So it's a ten-inch tablet, uh, 1920 by 1080. Uh, display, which is okay, although I find just after using it a lot, 
that it's almost like the sharpness on it it's is very up. sharp. Um, it's like extraordinarily sharp looking. But almost to the point to where small text has this like white halo around uh, it. Have you ever like on your TV, you, yeah. you ramp up sh the sharpness setting yeah. too high yeah. and then it gives you this like mm -hmm. white halo around uh, detail and stuff. I see that in this display a lot, which I haven't really liked. All The more I use it, the more I noticed it and uh, it was kind of distracting. But it's a 1.6 gigahertz quad core Snapdragon 400 processor. Okay, not the latest, so, greatest. Right, it's quad core, but it's running the 400 processor, yeah. right? And it's got the HD display. And my experience with this is just in running apps and switching around and everything, I get a lot of uh, choppiness and launching, or if I rotate it around, it kind of jitters before it turns. You know, obviously it, it does a different, at different speeds at different times, but ultimately I have a feeling that the 400 processor that's in here driving the, uh, the HD screen might be a little underpowered. I got that feeling over time, and definitely while playing games. Yeah. Things really kind of slowed down and, and jittered a lot. Well, at that price, I'm, I'm, I mean, that's pretty ama amazing price for what you're getting. 350 is not a bad price, yeah. that is true. How um, much storage is on that? It has eight, uh, sorry, 32 gigs of storage. Oh, that's plenty. So that's that's pretty that's good. A lot uh, for Android. Pretty good storage on board. Uh, it also has a micro SD card is slot, so if you want to add storage, you can. It's a 9,000 milliamp hour battery. Wow, what do you get for that? Pretty solid. They're rating it at 18 hours. And my, my testing with it, uh, I mean, I. I I don't know if it gets 18 solid hours. I didn't sit down for 18 hours and then sleep for eight hours and then come into work the next day uh, <laughs> with it. But uh, yeah, battery was just something you didn't have to think about. That's, am that's amazing. See, it's funny because in, in every way this beats the specs of, say, the iPad, except for perhaps the... The, the processor, mm -hmm. and, and it's a lot less expensive. Yeah, but that's kind of a big deal, It right? is a because big deal, you, I agree. You, when, as you use the tablet more and more, you really notice those slowdowns and yeah. everything, and it really kind of got on my nerves after a while. I wanted it to be just a little bit faster. It has an eight megapixel rear-facing camera. The camera, as you can see on the, the um, design here, it's very unique with this rounded kind of barrel down here. This is where the battery is, by the way. Ah, that's why it gets such good battery life. And it's also like that so that you can hold it like a book, right? And it's kind of comfortable with that. <laughs> hand. Okay. They have different modes that support holding it in different ways, although no matter how hard I tried setting these modes and trying to figure out why you would want to switch <laughs> from stand mode to hold mode to tilt mode, like I just don't get it. Every once in a while I'd see maybe the color temperature change a little bit, but I'm like, okay, well, why do I want the color temperature different when I'm holding it like this versus when I'm holding it with the stand that pops mm. out? I don't know, but anyways, uh, so the camera, as I was saying, is on the back of this barrel right here. Oh, it's in a weird spot. It's in a weird spot, especially if you're trying to take a picture the way you normally right hold where it. where your hand is. Yeah, your hand is right there, and uh, you're not going to get a very good picture. Let's see. Yeah, see, that's beautiful. <laughs> it's abstract. But if we wanted to know, know your blood oxygen level, we'd, we'd be able to uh, determine that. And I wouldn't say that the pictures were amazing. They weren't horrible, actually, for a tablet, and I kind of give cameras on a tablet somewhat of a pass anymore because because yeah. how Nobody, often are we taking uh, it's pictures good with our tablets? There. It's not Probably bad. not a whole lot, yeah. but uh, but it was decent. If not a little bit washed out, pretty much on everything that I took. Ooh, a little that oversaturated. That red is having trouble with that, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little oversaturated. Um, and I don't know what happened with my lips there. I did not paint my lips white when I took that picture. Okay. So. so it's not a good camera. I don't know. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's the best out. camera. I've yeah. seen worse. I've seen yeah. better, but it's a tablet. See, it did yeah. it again. Maybe it was my lips. I think you're actually... Uh, Do I have white lips right now? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you just cutting this straight to me. <laughs> no, uh, you don't. <laughs> what version of Android is on that? So this is 4.4.2. 4. Okay, so that's it's, okay. Yeah. It's not quite the latest, but it's yeah. close. Uh, Front-facing speakers, stu uh, stereo speakers on the front, Dolby Digital Plus, and I found them to be super loud. While I was away on my vacation, this was our white noise machine. Oh, good. <laughs> and I left it unplugged every single night, and I swear, you yeah, it was loud enough, you wake up the next day, and the battery is, I swear, it's sitting at the same spot, and it ran That's all night impressive. unplugged. So That's very impressive. Battery, battery is definitely a big plus. Do you get the sense, what's your sense, as a host of All About Android, about uh, how these are going to get updated. Will they go to 444? Will they go to L? I would I would hope so. I mean, I you know, it's kind of this a only released right? I believe this released back in April. Okay. It was a very silent low-key release yeah. from Lenovo. I think it's um, a good-looking tablet. Didn't really hear a lot about it. It definitely has, you know, I, I think the big standout here is A the battery and B the stand. 
uh, if this kind of a stand and the flexibility that it affords you, you know, you can hold it like that and type if, uh, if it would orient itself. You know, if I had an on-screen keyboard, that kind of slots it up, or I can, you know, prop it up if I'm watching a video, or I can have it, you know, flattened down to the side if I'm reading a book or something like that. So if you need that kind of flexibility, I mean, this is probably one of the few games in town that's going to give you that. If you're just looking for a straightforward tablet and... You know, I, it's hard because 350 is a good price, right? But at the same time, that performance really got on my nerves. Over time, uh, it, I, I have a hard time saying. giving it a pass for that yep. because you're, if you want, if you're going to use this as much as you hope to use it, then that kind of thing is going to bother you fast. Right. So. Okay. Uh, did All we right. do the pros and cons? No, let's do it real let's quick here. Uh, pros, battery, of course, uh, the stand, which is definitely a, a killer feature of this tablet. And, you know, I was pretty happy with the audio performance on this, so the speakers and the sound. Uh, the cons, definitely the performance, and that's a huge con in, in my opinion. The display, I think, could be better. It's specced well, but um, it kind of bothered my eyes over time. And it's Wi-Fi only. There is no LTE connectivity, so you're locked into Wi-Fi uh, if you're getting this tablet. Personally, if someone asked me, should I buy this, I would say don't buy it. Um, just because I feel like that performance is really going to, going to get you know, bug you. on you. Yeah. It, it bugged me a lot. Yeah. Um, having said that, you know, 350 is a great price, so use your judgment. But I wouldn't recommend uh, my friend... Uh, it's you guys, pretty looking. My friends, buddies, to buy this. My pals. Yeah. Jason Howell produces TNT Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. He's also the host of uh, the great All About Android, which is coming up later today. It's yep. every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And on of course, Android Twitter. App Arena, which is all about the apps and not the hardware. That's a great so. show. We, we really you. enjoy that. Brand new on uh, Twitter. That's yeah, a lot of fun. Thank you, Jason. Thank this you. is also a Lenovo. Um, this is their new Chromebook. And like, the, uh, like Lenovo has been known for, the uh, oh, nice. yoga is famous for being a bendy. This mm -hmm. one doesn't go all the way over. It only goes uh, to, but the idea is this would be a stand mode. And when you do this, of course, it flips around. So the uh, orientation is, is right for the screen. You see how it flips upside down? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of neat. I mean, uh, and then you get a real cap, uh, uh, keyboard. The, this is a Chromebook uh, running Google Chrome's OS, which I don't need to tell you about. Everybody by now understands that essentially that's a online operating system that features all of Google's apps and services. I love Chrome OS. I think Chrome OS is great it, for a student. Yeah. Jeff Jarvis, uh, our host about uh, on uh, This Week in Google, has essentially said, I don't need a computer anymore. I only need a Chromebook. And it's true for most of what you do. If it's surfing email, he was a writer. He can write right. uh, even simple spreadsheets and uh, presentations. You can do that all using uh, Google Apps and the Chromebook. There are lots of uh, app extensions. I don't need to go into great detail. Really, the question people are always saying is, well, which Chromebook should I get? Like all Chromebooks, this is a very affordable. This is a little more expensive then the one I currently like the best, which is the uh, Acer C720, uh, but there's a reason for it. This is $329. It has a uh, Celeron a processor, 16 gigs of storage, uh, 2 gigs of DDR3 RAM. Battery life, they claim 8 hours. I'm more like 6 hours. Mm -hmm. It's not a super long battery life. Uh, but here's the reason it's a little bit more expensive. It's a touch screen. Now, there aren't a whole lot of touch screens in the Chromebook world. So having and they a touch... should all be that, in my opinion. After you know, having the Pixel, I feel like I, it know, really comes in handy. That's the main one, is the Google's yeah. own reference yeah. implementation, which is very expensive, the Pixel. But I also feel like Chrome OS isn't designed for touch exactly. A lot of the targets are very small, you know, and they're... And there's no real way to make them bigger. The biggest problem I have with this is the screen. This is a what they uh, call a TN screen, the older form of twisted pneumatic screens, not an IPS LCD. And that means, and you can even see it here, it's washed out, yeah. especially at, at off-angle viewing. It just doesn't look great. Uh, they may, you know, they do that because they need to cut the cost. But you're already seeing one of the big problems. I had this problem in a little bit with the Pixel, but I have it a lot with this. This machine does not have enough RAM and enough processor to really, well, I hate to say it, it's doing pretty well right now. But That's I found a lot goes. of hesitation <laughs> on this. I've always done the yeah. Verge test, which is a, yeah, a very is a challenging website, yes. a lot of images. I find that if you've got a lot of tabs open, it slows down. Uh, even, and if it's anything graphics heavy, it slows down. And the hesitation, much like that yoga, mm -hmm. gets to you after a while. On the other hand, Lenovo is famous for their keyboards, and this has an excellent uh, keyboard for a Chromebook. Uh, it's kind of Mac-ish feel, that, that short throw uh, embedded keys. A pretty good trackpad as well. 
So, uh, you know, it's, it's a nicely specced Chromebook for a little bit more with touch. Um, it unfortunately uses the Lenovo proprietary power adapter, so you've got to have that SD card slot, a couple of USB ports, one 2.0, one 3.0, uh, and uh, HDMI, mini HDMI out to uh, finish it up. AC, uh, 802.11 AC uh, Wi-Fi. Um, you know, on, on the surface, there's a lot to like about this. I don't think at that price point it's the best Chromebook out there. And I'm very interested with the successor that Lenovo is going to ship to this, which will have a better screen. It will be able to lie flat. It'll have a, a tablet capability. Um, now, that'll be more expensive. Lenovo's uh, next Chromebook is going to be one of the mid-range Chromebooks that we've all been hoping for in the $500 range. Mm -hmm. So you get more RAM. I really think Chromebooks need four gigs of RAM. With two gigs, yeah. you just it just bogs down when you open up a lot of tabs, when you use it the way you're most likely going to want to use this. Uh, so pros and cons. I like it that it's touch. It's a nice keyboard. Uh, it's a it's a pretty good trackpad. It's a great price as as always with all uh, Chromebooks. The price is excellent, um, and and you and you know, everybody knows the benefits and features of uh, Chrome OS. So I don't really need to explain how good that is. Uh, on the con side, there is hesitation, and you see when I pass scroll through the spreadsheet, you see the jumping, uh, which is really uh, uh, quite annoying after a while. Don't pay any attention to that uh, strobing you're seeing. That's just because our cameras are interacting with a refresh rate on that. But it isn't a great screen. That's my other con. It should be. I, li I would like to see a little bit better screen on this. Uh, in my opinion, there are less expensive Chromebooks that are probably a better buy for you. So I'm going to mark this a do not buy. Also because you may want to wait until the next Acer, the 13-inch, comes out with the uh, Tegra K1 chip. That's supposedly going to be a lot faster, and it has 4 gigs. In fact, in general, I'd say if you want to use Chromebook, you're going to want 4 gigs of RAM. So I would say don't buy the N20P. It has some nice features, but you do want 4 gigs of RAM uh, to use Chrome OS. Still, you got to admire these inexpensive. I mean, this is essentially... At 350 bucks netbook netbook price, it really is, and it'd be great. It would be fine for a student, and given that it is the only uh, inexpensive touchscreen that I know of in the Chromebook, this would probably be a choice if you need touchscreens. Otherwise, stay away. Uh, get the Acer's or uh, look or wait for the next generation Lenovo Chromebook, which uh, on on the face of it looks to be quite good. Well, that ends our edition of uh, Do Not Buy for this week. Did we have? <laughs> No, wait a minute. We had sure, one buy. Yeah. We had one buy. Chad okay. liked the phone. All right. Chad Johnson liked the <laughs> phone. Padre, as you remember, didn't wasn't crazy about the Toshiba. And uh, we have a do not buy on the Lenovo Yoga and the uh, Lenovo N20P. They're never going to send us any more not stuff, are they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks to our great host. You know, we do this show... Uh, so that you can get an experience of what it's like to actually use this equipment. If there's something that you say, boy, I'd like to know what, what our TWIT team thinks of a product, just email us, byb at twit.tv. All the reviews are up, as with all of our shows on twit.tv. In this case, twit.tv slash byb. But this one, this show's a little bit different. We also put uh, a full version on YouTube, like all the other shows, and a chopped up version, review by review on YouTube so you can share an individual review with a family member or a friend that's interested in buying that product or shopping around. You'll find all of those YouTube videos at youtube.com slash before you buy. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next time. Remember, you gotta watch before you buy. We'll see you next time.